Hi everyone, and welcome to my first YouTube video here at Mayfield Restorations. The piece I'm working on today is a 1940s vanity table, or dressing table as it's called here in the UK. Uh, I got this piece from the local charity shop. Um, it was a little beaten up, but uh, I knew there was definitely a hidden beauty there, just waiting to shine through. It's my first attempt at recording and sharing my work, so please be kind. I know it's not perfect, so I'd really appreciate your feedback on the things that I need to improve for future videos. Plus, leave your comments down below. Thank you. Uh, regardless of this and my limited recording and editing skills, I hope you enjoy the video uh, and you definitely won't believe the difference at the end. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm David and I restore, restyle and refinish old and loved furniture. I use a variety of methods and techniques to bring this forgotten furniture back to life. Welcome to my channel. You can find all sorts of things when you start cleaning these pieces. Um, and this was a life insurance policy schedule. Um, I won't say who it's for, but it was dated in 1944 and it was by the mother for her one-year-old little boy. Um, not valuable, but interesting. The, the cleaning product I'm using here is um, it's just an all-purpose degreaser. Um, it's actually called Elbow Grease, um, available here in the UK. I'm not too sure what the equivalent would be in the States. Um, but it's relatively cheap and it seems to do the job, but uh, yeah. And this is why I would recommend you always clean your furniture before starting. This is my Festool Rotex 90 sander. Um, probably one of the best purchases I made because 90% of what I do is sanding. Um, I also have another sander. Well, I've got quite a few sanders actually. Um, but this one absolutely rips through uh, finishes. Um, it's got a rotary action and a random orbital action. And it's also got an interchangeable head. So it's got a delta head so you can get into the corners. Not cheap, but a great piece of kit. This is my other favorite sander. This is a DeWalt 125 mil random orbital sander. When I bought this, it was about a hundred pounds. I think it's even cheaper than that now. It's about 85, 90 pounds. 
It comes with a little dust bag, but you can also plug your shot back into it. These little blades are great for getting in those hard to reach areas and scraping off the, uh, the finish. Just make sure you use a new blade because blunt blades tend to burr the wood uh, and make it harder to sand it back. You can damage the wood as well. So always use a clean blade. Time to fix that broken drawer, the little split in the top there. It's easy to do with a bit of wood glue and a wood syringe. Just don't leave the wood syringe on the shelf for a week as it just dries up. Uh, I didn't have any more, but I made the best, again, using one of those utility knives. It did the job and it got it clamped up and fixed. All I'm doing here is using some white spirit and a rag just to wipe over the sanded drawers to give me an idea of what the final finish would look like with a clear coat. It's the, it's the only reason I'm doing it, there's no other reason. Uh, you can use white spirits to, to clear some of the dust away, but this is just to give me an idea of what the final product will look like with a clear coat on. And yeah, really like it. All I'm basically doing here is making a template for the shape of the veneer that's damaged. And then I've got some, uh, it's pre-glued edge bond veneer. It's not exactly the same veneer as the, as the drawers, but it's such a small piece. Um, and it's very difficult to get some of this vintage veneer. So it should be okay, but this is all you do. It's quite simple. Make a template, cut some of the veneer off, put the template over the top of the veneer, cut it, and then you just stick it onto the area that needs to be repaired. And you'll see in a second, you just simply iron it on. The glue melts, once it's dry, it adheres back to the wood and you just sand it flush.
<laughs> if you like what you've seen so far, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the like button. I'd really appreciate it. It's a new channel and all your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. This is a stain blocking primer that I use. I tend to use Binzin's a primer. It's just a shellac based. This, however, dries a little bit quicker and it's just as good actually. It's also going under a black, so it's not so much a problem for bleed through. I just feel it gives a better finish if you prime before painting. These handles are solid mahogany, really nice. Just it's got this old finish on it that needs to come off, but you'll you'll see the difference when it's finished. I wanted the handles to be slightly darker than the draw front that I was leaving wood as I wanted them to pop a little bit. So these are having a coat of walnut wood stain on them. I wanted the piece to be slightly higher than the original and you saw the state of the legs at the start of this video. So these are new legs and you will see the design I'm gonna use on these initially. They were going to be stained, but the design changed along the way. You will see that uh, shortly in the video. Personally, I don't tend to use mineral paint or chalk paint. I have nothing against it. Um, I've just never really used it. I find that eggshell, an acrylic eggshell, so it's a water-based eggshell, it's very durable. It comes in every color under the sun. You can get it mixed to any color you want. Um, and the brand that I use in the UK is Johnston's. I found this paint to be really consistently good especially for spraying. I tend to go for a smooth finish in my pieces. I do paint by brush sometimes. I generally spray and I often use high density foam rollers. Um, this is just my preference and I hope you like the finished result.
I tend to use a variety of top coats on my different pieces but for this because it was a mix of paint and wood I wanted to protect it with some satin decorators varnish by Polyvine. The method I use is multiple coats, possibly three or four, uh, thin coats just to ensure that there's no drips, no runs and to get that smooth finish. Before treating the drawers, I like to add some little details to my pieces. I just, I just think it makes the finished piece pop uh, a little bit more. So here I am painting the dovetail joints by hand, uh, only on the drawers that have got the painted fronts. Uh, I'll do this prior to waxing the drawers. Um, for this, I'm using Howard's Feed and Wax. These drawers are from a 1940s bureau, as previously mentioned, so they will be a little bit dry and they do need some sort of nourishment. So this Howard's Feed and Wax is great, really easy to use. Simply put some on, spread it around with a wax brush, leave it 20 minutes, wipe off the excess, and then about an hour later, just buff it with a soft cloth and the, the difference is amazing. Thanks for sticking with me for so long on this video. I hope you like the final result and it's now time for the reveal. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and the work that I've produced. I definitely plan on adding more videos, so if you like what I do, please show your support by hitting subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching.